The following is a review of the comic and should not be looked at as an endorsement of the creators involved. If you really think that, you should get yourself checked because you are reading things into it that are not there. Also, the quality of this video is pretty low, so if you're expecting higher standards, go check out someone else. What you see is what you get. So thank you and enjoy. Or don't. Hi, Starcraft here, and well, I'm back again properly this time, and thankfully I've got a couple of books I'm going to go over, some of which are Indiegogo or Kickstarter, others are ones that I order that fit in the same outfit, and uh, fit, fit in the same category, sorry, and at least two of which, well one I'm finally getting to after a long while. I put it off long enough. The other one, I'm going to go back over and do a proper review since, well, the follow-up is out and everything. So might as well actually go over the original so I can get my thoughts on the follow-up. What am I going over exactly? Well, first of all, Black Hops Volume 1 and 2. I'm going to do separate videos for each one of these. The one I'll be going back to is Iron Sights Volume 1, so I can talk about Iron Sights uh, 2, Psychos. I'm going to finally get to Flying Fortress and Ukulele and the Crackle Stone. I'll be getting to this bad boy last. Am I saving the best for last? Well, you'll find out for yourself. Hopefully I'll get to Flying Fortress, although if there's one I might end up saving for a later point, it's this one because, well, look at it. It's <laughs> pretty thick. But yeah, for this video, I'm going to be going over the original Iron Sights, giving a proper review as opposed to my spoiler free one. Why also am I doing this? It still to give context for when I do my do the other video tomorrow. But yeah, it opens up with um, in Renosa in Mexico. As we're basically seeing a bunch of, um, well, let me get a little history, I realize. This was the first actual, well, not the first one he did, the first one that he sent out that your boy Zach had done of a campaign. With a cover by, uh, Kelsey Shannon, and interior artwork by, um, um, uh, Ibai Canales. It shows me point out that this story was also done with Rich, with Rich as well as a Carlos I. Silva. That's important for when we get to the second one. But yeah, it basically opens up with, um, you know, there's a bunch of usual cartel jargon just talking it all out, planning things out and everything. And um, next thing we know, we then see um, a rabbit just sitting there as it gets shot and blasted by, um, by uh, Ram and Ramadi. Who is basically the um, they're gonna be the, one of the main characters of this uh, whole this whole book? As um, yeah, he decided you know he's just gonna go take a nap while everyone else is gone. He's a former military guy, so he knows how to kill. Meanwhile, we see another man, um, Woods, is walking down as a um, car goes by, dropping a kilo of um, of coke. Yeah, the guy's gonna get killed as um. Woods knows very well that, yeah, this isn't going to go well. As we then see, um, a guy runs up, uh, pulls up and says, like, hey, give you a ride. He decides not to do it, and he just tosses the, um, kilo of coke in there, leaving it for the guy to take it, because, well, the guy was basically being an idiot anyway. And then, um, Ramadi gets up to take a, take a leak. When he, hears, he sees a commotion going on, as this girl, that's me, is being deal with like the cartel and then well the body just starts gunning all of them since he's a great sniper and he just guns them all down and then after he does it he didn't realize this he done fucked up he done made a big mistake as um we then see ramadi meet up with one of his um his old friends conway and the two start to just buddy around a little bit talking about how he screwed up and that he needs help then as they're heading out, Ramadi has a bit of a run-in with Woods. The two are about ready to 
throw down. And, um, but then he gets, and he, uh, Woods gets picked up. You know what? I just realized that I'm, you know, this is just take forever going over all this, but let me just say, there is a grindhouse feel to all this. Very good stuff. The characters, you actually do get some, um, hand liking of them. For example, Ramadi's sister. We don't see her much of her, but I like her. I thought she was a very interesting character. You know, she was going to go meet a friend who Ramadi says, your slut friend. To which her sister says, Johnny, she's not a slut anymore. She's married. Ramadi says, so she's a prior service slut. <laughs> and we already know Ramadi, you know, like he uh, kind of has a thing for Ramadi's sister. Uh, they decide, you know, like they're going to use the place of the steakhouse and all that. Conway has a way of utilizing cheese sandwiches as a way to somehow calm down Ramadi's ex who wants, you know, money. And, um, well, yeah, basically throughout all of their actions, it has caused a lot of grief for Ramadi. As he's basically realized that, um, yeah, he's going to be, you know, they're coming his way. Woods actually helps him out. Um, why? Eh, no exact reason, except later on it's made very clear that Woods is a Fed who is working within the cartels. But yeah, basically, you know, they um, have to get out of there. His sister is sent out, you know, but he's saying like, you don't hear from me, then just don't ever call and just keep going. But yeah, it's, um, Conway and Ramadi and Woods are going to be our main focal point. As, um... <sighs> Yeah, we're basically, again, throughout all of this, we just have some nice little character interactions going on. We're introduced to this psych, this crazy guy. I mean, seriously, this guy's a complete psycho. He has, like, a sword and everything, as he, um... Also has guns all stashed all over the place, etc., etc. Again, throughout all this, it's a simple story of them trying to take, you know, on the cartels and everything, just trying to clear up the mess. And everything going on. Um, again, and we again we just have them and the psycho guy who's been sent in to take care of them. As all this is going on, you're seeing again this guy is completely another um you know crazy. He was like, I'm a deaf mute, you're a marine, right? And then he uses it, you know, takes out the um the one guy. Again, throughout all this, it's just a case of this small, a lot of talking. There's a lot of dialogue, but the artwork actually endears itself to all this. I gotta say, um, Canales, I think that's how you say his name, is very good with his style. In fact, eventually I'll be getting to a review, I only have a digital copy of it, so it's gonna take a long time, of the abducted, or abducted or abductables, one of the two. I'll be going over that eventually, but Again, this artwork really just works for this gritty grindhouse style. Which again, is what your boy Zach was going for. And eventually, um... Again, as all this is going on, we're just seeing Ramai and Conway are just, you know... They have to go their own separate ways and everything, but as this is going on, Conway gets, well, found out, pulled over. And eventually, causes them to, you know, go for, you know... To have himself taken out because he realized that he was going to be a squealer. So Conway is killed out. Setting up the notion that anyone could die throughout all of this. And it's a bummer because Conway's death, at least it feels like it builds up to it. And when it happens, you're just like, jeez, oh, Conway. But again, it felt like you felt like he made the choice. It's like, shit, I have no other choice. So he just sets it all off. So Woods is still helping out um, uh, Ramadi. Who feels like, um, I gotta go find that girl. I started this all mess because of her. I gotta go help her out if it's the only way to actually make sense out of all this. Like, if I can save her, he basically feels like, you know, it'll work. You know, it'll make it all worth it. So, basically, they, um, use the sources, get a bunch of guns, and eventually make their way to the cartels. So they're gonna, they're gonna you know, find the girl, and, um... Again, make their way in. And eventually, um, hold on. Oh yeah, we also have, we also have a be where, um, um, 
Yeah, Ramadi shows up just how psychotic he can be. But yeah, eventually he and Woods, they find a, um... Um, a guy's all, you know, pinned down by someone else. And Woods just kills the guy. Takes him out, um, who, you know, um... It was a Don, Don Julio, who's not exactly a forgiving type. So they take him out so they don't have to deal with it all. They eventually um, get abducted and are taken into, well, basically what's going to be like an arena era. And um, they also meet up with Esme. Uh, yeah, they finally find her and everything and basically look at her as an insurance policy because, well, they don't, they want her. Uh, and, the, and the cartel won't kill her. But yeah, she seems like a nice, sweet, innocent, you know, lady. And eventually they make their way out. Um, hold on. Uh, yeah, again, they're planning on taking it out so they can all get out of there. Because you got to still take the cartel out, otherwise they're going to keep on being done to hell, hunted down. Until they eventually find where the location is as, um... What? Basically, he just wonders, you know, basically the way we have it is Ramadi is a good man who does something bad just to see what it feels like. Well, Woods is basically a bad man who does something good once in a while just to see if he still can. That's how he looks at himself. But eventually you have, um, so many of them are just calling out saying, get them, they want blood, as they're all heading in. Thanks to Woods and Ramadi, they start gunning everyone down, just blasting them all. Um, Esme, though, is there just something weird about her, though? Every single you know, someone like shoot them, they're shooting at the nerd, this, yeah, the nerd guy. And then as they're running, um, Woods is running, he gets taken out by um, the psycho guy, who, and yeah, Woods is just down for the count. And then Ramadi takes out the psycho until eventually um, Esme um, deals with the main nerd guy and everything. You have someone else pull up. Um, and um, yeah, they have the one guy all cornered. We then see that these other guys were with Esme, who is later revealed that um, she was working for the sheriff. But the, they um, they scared everyone off. The last deputy me handed me uh, handed me the sheriff's badge as he walked out. Says she was she was in charge. In other words, now we're finding out that Esme is not this sweet innocent girl. She wants to take over. She then shoots the guy in the head, and then feels like, you know what, everybody, you be uh, you shoot him from now on. You're the guy. You're gonna be one of my hitmen going forward. As well, he feels like he has no other choice but to go with them. So he just has no women, no kids. But then she's like, you'll kill whoever I say. Revealing what a cold-hearted bitch she is. But it ends with him basically like, what other choice does he have? So, that was Iron Sights 1. Nice, mostly simple story. I kind of breeze through it because there's a lot of just standing around talking stuff. But it feels that, that Tarantino... Grindhouse, you know, or Robert Rodriguez Grindhouse style movie. And the artwork really works. And it just felt so simple. Enough characters, there were some characters that popped up, but they all have a purpose. Even those who got killed off, they felt like there was, you know, a sense of weight to it when they died. Even Woods, even though it was kind of unceremoniously, it still felt like, hey, wait, where'd the crazy guy go? Oh shit, he just killed Woods. And again, it just felt so interesting. When we get to talking about the second one tomorrow, I'm not going to be as... Uh, I'm going to be fair. I will be fair, but I'm not going to be as positive. I didn't hate it. I'm not regretting buying it. But you'll find out more about what I say when we get there. But until then, this is StarCraft. Catch you guys later.